Come on, y'all. I'm about to use a, uh, I, I think they call it a, a weed glass, I think. Oh, come on. It's a glass. What is he doing? Oh my gosh. People are doing like suck and cause suction to draw blood and try to make their lips bigger. No, you're gonna cause injury. You can potentially cause bleeding into your lips. You can cause a lot of bruising and then you can actually cause permanent disfiguration. There's different fibrotic tissue that can form. I want my lips big so I can suck <laughs> This is the same idea of a penis pump. That's not mine. At least say with a penis pump, it is a tissue or an organ that is supposed to get engorged with blood. Oh my gosh. If you get too much blood within your lip tissue, you actually decrease blood flow and actually cause ischemia and necrosis, basically where your lips could actually die. Yeah. This is why you don't do this. He's drooling because his lips are so swollen that he's not used to the structure of his lips. We always worry if somebody's drooling, not from the lips being swollen, but your tongue being swollen or swelling in your posterior pharynx because you can't swallow and control your own secretions. I'm just warm my life doing this stupid family, bro. It is not something that I would advise to do. If you're looking for some cosmetic changes to your lips, seek out a professional, seek out a plastic surgeon. Hey. Don't you ever besmirch me. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Where'd you go? Oh, the slow down speed and blood is, whoa, cool, not cool. I just see a lot of blood. Blood? We got lots of blood in our body, right? Many liters, many pints of blood. You can survive maybe if you lose just about half. You're at the cusp of like death and survival. What are we looking at? It almost looks like when I went and saw Body World or Body Exhibit where they do the plasticization of humans, like anatomy, and it's just the blood of the body, all the blood vessels in a liquid casing. That's kind of like what it looked like. I can't stop, 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 I can't stop. What the heck? It's like very dark blood. So most of that blood was probably venous blood versus arterial blood, which is a lot brighter. Robin? Oh my gosh. <gasps> Robin? That is awful. That's awful. On the arms, the tissue, appropriately shown, it's not just like perfectly cut off, it's all jagged. When somebody gets an amputation and if the tissue is all kind of rough and beat up, it's very hard to reattach versus if it's perfectly cut. Okay. Oh, oh. Here we go, blade out and... Oh, <laughs> body cut That's what I was waiting for oh, you to see. This is awesome. <laughs> if you had to pick a way to cut through somebody, yeah. head all the way to the or the first. That's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> What's easier to cut through? It's probably easier to cut through the bottom end to the, the bottom top. end. Okay. Yeah. Because of the bones, the way that your pelvis is structured. Gotcha. So it's easier to get through that section, but then it's all the same skull. all the way. Ooh. And all these like contraptions, just having previous experience discussing medieval and dark age type contraptions, these are just as bad or even worse. Fluid. Is he gonna drown him? Is it just water? Yeah. Somebody can hold their breath for 30 seconds to a minute. It's different for every individual and it changes from being in a calm situation where you're holding your breath now to where you're kind of freaking out, increasing your oxygen more to your tissue. So you actually really need to calm down. Obviously so much harder than me just saying it. Trying to use a knife or a pen to try to break the glass. <gasps> Oh my gosh, holy cow. So wasn't expecting that. He takes out this pen and does his own crike. He's putting it below the Adam's apple. You want to pop right in. Pop, pop, pop. To your trachea, below your vocal cords, and you can start breathing. That's pretty impressive. Wow. I don't know if anybody's tried to breathe through a straw. It's actually kind of hard. When we intubate somebody at the hospital where we put a breathing tube in, we actually try to use the largest we can. Typically, we try to get an eight French in there. So a good sized tube. Hello. Yeah. Never good. Back to work. 
Uh-oh. Hey, boys! Jolene was a four-star tease. <laughs> I feel like she probably didn't even need construction done on her house. They're right. like, hey. Looks like they're fixing her driveway I'm or sidewalk or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help me out. I could use some suntan lotion. Oh my. <laughs> I love that there's a lounger right where they're working. I always keep my lounger in the front lawn. It's like a backyard <laughs> private thing. Your pool, maybe. Swimming pool. But when you're an object of mass distraction, <laughs> you leave yourself open <laughs> to attack. Oh! Oh! No. oh. oh. What exploded? Whatever it was, severed her literally in half. It almost looks like the spine is even severed. Come on! Come on! We still have some attachment of the intestines. There would probably be a lot more blood, but that's okay. Probably bleed out and die pretty damn fast. That many organs are exposed. It's more the aorta, it's more the bleeding. Would you kick the bucket that fast? Minutes, not like seconds. Poor Jolene. Jolene! Back to it. Oh, <laughs> what the? Oh! Big mallet, piece of wood, crushing somebody's skull. Could it actually happen with enough continuous blunt trauma and force? Yes. Yes! Quite impressive that we actually see the eyeball actually protruding out. <gasps> Holy cow! You're getting blood coming down. Obviously, the person's still alive. Manage the individual. Airway, breathing, circulation. You probably need to go on a ventilator. Obviously, there's going to be traumatic brain injury. But the ultimate question ends up being, will the person survive and will they survive with a meaningful life? Mm. I just don't know. It seems like you're trying to speak. But you just took a hell of a hit. Might not be able to speak because the part of the brain that has been affected Bills has been affected. by the trauma could be the area of speech. There's an area called Broca's area, which has to do with speech, so it could be affected. We see this a lot when people have strokes, especially on that side and that area of the brain, and they can't express what they want to say. <laughs> I just popped your skull so hard, your eyeball just popped out. We actually we try to cover up the eye itself just to protect it. You worry about a retrobulbar hematoma. Basically, there's a pocket of blood behind the eye pushing the eyeball out. If that does happen, it's a eye emergency because it's pushing on the optic nerve in the wrong direction. In the wrong direction! No exceptions. Oh. Oh my God. Oh! What? Uh, I wasn't expecting this. Everything is just smutched and squirted everywhere. When you actually have just brain matter, it's actually just grayish white injury that doesn't come to the emergency department. But we do see people where part of their skulls might be removed, fractured open, and brains are coming out. Is that how you want to be remembered? Even just looking at this syringe, it's got like metal components to it. In the emergency department, we actually use disposable, one-time use type of thing. So the only metal per se with the syringe like this would be actually the needle. And then when you're actually done, you always dispose of it in the sharps container. Last chance to look at me, Hector. You can see that Hector has a nasal cannula on. It's basically a device that gives oxygen into the nose. And typically you're giving anywhere from one liter to six liters per minute of oxygen. Oh, got a bomb. Oh, what? I talk about explosions in the past. If you survive them, worried about obviously the shrapnel, debris, getting into tissue, ruptured eardrums, pneumothorax, hemothorax, those sorts of things. Wait a minute, how'd that guy make it out? Oh. Whoa, holy cow. Significant burn blast injuries. The eye is actually missing. And obviously we can see that part of the maxilla as well as the mandible on the right are partially gone. Oh, okay, wow. Okay, so it was enough trauma that it must have inflicted enough injury into the brain and intracranial space, which probably caused some brain bleeding, but for some reason was able to, for a short period of time, get up and walk. Could this possibly happen? Possibly. 
Oh! I gotta comment on the anatomy. You're seeing all the ribs, you're seeing muscle. It almost looks like there's no skin or the person's so dehydrated that you're able to see everything through that. Why is this doctor shirtless and almost looks possessed and sick himself? I would never go into a hospital shirtless. Like, come on. Come on! Oh! The elevator shaft crushed that thing in the mid abdomen kind of lower chest area. What actually happens with that? Rib fractures, obviously, if the area is low enough. So you can snap some ribs, and if the ribs snap, it causes a lot of pain. And unfortunately, when people fracture ribs, there's really not much that we can do at the hospital. They kind of need to heal on their own, unless they're so destroyed, then there's an evaluation by an orthopedic surgeon. Oh! Right lower quadrant injury with a bullet. With a bullet! You're gonna have the burn from the muzzle itself. It could be a through and through, missed major things, could hit the intestines. It will take a little bit of time for significant amount of bleeding and or stool to start pulling in the abdomen. So obviously if you get a injury like this, compress the area, try to get help immediately, call 911 or whatever number it is in your country, but hold compression to the area so you don't bleed. And then he's got a lot of superficial wounds to his face from going through that glass. Very common. A lot of times we'll do x-rays when somebody comes to the hospital to make sure that there's no glass in the wound before we sew it back up. Bullet that close to your ear could cause compressive force damage to your eardrum and cause a rupture or perforated tympanic membrane, which is extremely painful. You'll have a little bit of bleeding. Typically they'll heal on their own. Oh my gosh, stab to the throat. This is gonna cause airway compromise if it's right through the trachea, difficulty breathing, and then blood pooling into the airway and swelling. When it out, use a pencil. Oh! Wow, they say in courses where you have to learn to do self-defense that these objects are actually useful. Oh! Oh my gosh, ow, my ear. The eardrum is so sensitive. I have to sometimes sedate people to get foreign bodies out of the ear canal because it's so painful. So I can't even imagine that. Awful, awful. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Anterior trauma to the neck affecting either your carotid artery, jugular vein, or the trachea itself. And then going posterior hits into the back. Could it have gone into the brain stem? severs the connection between the brain and the body and <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Obviously, it takes a lot of strength to wield a big ax. Then you have a lot of weight behind that blunt object that has a little bit of sharpness to it. So you can cause a lot of damage in the sense of blunt trauma with some lacerations and possible fracturing of bones. If you get hit in the head, you're gonna have the initial trauma injuries to the face, but you could actually get intracranial bleeding, subdural hematomas, epidural hematomas, and subarachnoid bleeding. For this experiment, we have a more modern war hammer. It's a tactical war hammer. You're it's here. Good one. You? Oh, <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. That war hammer wasn't like super hefty, so yeah. it wasn't a ton of weight behind the swings. Yep. That one in particular was like made out of some like polyurethane. Okay. So it was a little lighter material. But it actually has to do with how strong the person wielding it yes. is actually swinging mm -hmm. it. It actually hit me right in the back of the cab. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Is that a bad idea? All I can think about is Houdini. Didn't he die when he got punched in the stomach? That's what they say, okay. but I wasn't there. Data has indeed formed. Instant bruising. Mm -hmm. If you get hit so hard, you can actually cause pancreatitis. Oh. But mm -hmm. unlikely to perforate your stomach. Gotcha. It's just gonna cause more bruising than anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sent a, oh, a horrible kind of a, pain yeah. to your loose shooting pain down my arm. Yes, I think he okay. hit a nerve. So you have big deltoids. I'm assuming that probably didn't hurt as bad. The shoulder definitely not as bad as the stomach. It does feel a little bit weird when you get clipped with that, that bone. Right? Oh, if you top. hit the bone. bone. That even pokes out for me, even yep. with the, the muscle surrounding it. Yep. <laughs> oh no! my oh! God! <laughs> Compared to getting hit in my quads, as opposed to my hamstrings, the uh -huh. hamstrings tend to sting more. Probably because you're more developed in, okay, your, in yeah. your quads uh -huh. than you are in your hamstrings. Mm -hmm. And quad has quad four. Yep. So you got four versus three in the back. You might have noticed. So punctured. Warhammer has yes. two ends. 
It also has a spike pickaxe. Yeah, please don't use I that. Figure. We wow. gotta give that a little test. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, wow, that's a Charlie horse. I've yeah, that's one. like gonna be so uh, bad. It's uh, like a little rock here. You can see the bulge yeah. forming. The data has grown. So the data, <laughs> the data is there. So the bulge and the rock is all just a swollen tissue okay. that, that uh -huh. was there because of the puncture wound. In conclusion, do I think <laughs> the war hammer is an effective weapon? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty effective. It would hurt a lot to get hit by it. But do I think a war hammer could smack off the arms of a full-grown titan in one swing? Nope. <laughs> I doubt it. This video was inspired by Attack on Titan. Oh, okay, very good. <laughs> yeah. On a scale of one to 10, how painful were all of these injuries with this hammer? Probably like a six. Okay, all right. So it's like, it definitely hurts, yep. but it's not like the worst thing I've ever, you know, done. <laughs> right. Oh, awesome, look over there. You can take a selfie in a hospital bed to get social media attention. Come on. A long time ago, when they didn't really understand the effects of cell phones, you weren't allowed to have cell phones in certain areas. Nowadays, they found that cell phone signal doesn't necessarily interrupt the machines that we use at the hospital. So that's relatively okay. Don't really want to get into it, but I'm fine. <laughs> well, this is the last thing I wanted. <laughs> I definitely see people who do come to the emergency department, take lots of photos in there. As long as you're not taking photos of the staff and equipment and you have permission, I don't see a big problem with it, but it has to be done under the right circumstances. You can't be taking photos of other people. I'm going to feed you your own heart. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was a great line. They're superheroes, they have unbelievable strength, but if somebody's punched that hard in the chest, you can fracture your sternum, fracture your ribs. Sometimes you can mess up your heart. We've seen it before in sports injuries where an individual gets hit so hard in their chest that it causes cardiac arrhythmias. <laughs> Boom! The injury of people sliding. We see this when people have motorcycle accidents. The clothing that they're wearing is highly unlikely to be that abrasive resistant. So you see people who just take off layers and layers of skin. A lot of times people on bikes and they slide on the asphalt need skin grafts. Whoa, laser beams that he's catching with his hand. Come on. The lasers just remind me of the little red light lasers that we have. Please don't shine those in people's eyes because it could potentially cause damage. My ophthalmology buddies out there would appreciate not the extra business, actually. Never been hit by some of your own size before? You're punching people in the face. Not only are you causing injury to the other person, but to yourself. If you punch somebody's mouth and their teeth lacerate your hand, significantly increase the risk of having a bad infection that can get into your joint, into your bones. Is it really worth it? You have to turn with the punch to reduce. Oh my gosh. The nose bleeds so easy with nasal trauma. Most of the time, you'll have a fracture to your nose. The bone fracture is typically one way or the other. It doesn't go too much off center, but can bleed a lot and cause a lot of significant discomfort. Better. Oh. Oh my gosh, the sound ruptured his eardrums. Really cool. Very cool stuff. That does happen if there's a ton of pressure. I've seen people who have had blast injuries to where they've ruptured their eardrum and it's just like destroyed. Ear infections actually can cause an eardrum to rupture as well. And every goddamn person you know! Oh, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting that. I did not see that coming. The jaw, AKA the mandible, is a cool hinge joint up here. Helps us with mastication. I've seen people have pretty bad dislocations and that to be able to fix that, literally you just have to push down and move it in one direction or the other. He ripped out his heart. Ripping out the heart. Could you do it? Probably not. At least anatomically, it looks pretty cool. You got multiple attachments of where the blood vessels would be. Remember what I promised you. I, li <laughs> I like that the heart had one extra beat. I don't know if that was him squeezing it. Typically, if the blood is not going into the heart, the structure of the heart actually gets softer and it's not as full like that. Now swallow. Whoa, okay, let's take a look. Good job by the animators looking at the heart. You have multiple different blood vessels around the heart, your right coronary artery, your left, which is multiple different branches. And then we've got the eyes. You can see the injection of the sclera from just working so hard. 
and it just squishes his skull. The only time I've ever really seen skulls fractured and brains everywhere is usually from a head hitting either concrete, falling from great heights, or in really bad car accidents. Today, I'm going to be curing someone with total blindness. We will be using a new artificial lens that will give this person sight for the first time. Okay, so if you're putting in a new lens, typically that means that the lens of the eye that you currently have is not working. And the most common reason for that is cataracts. Basically, that is clouding of your lens, making it really difficult to see. I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. Remove the swabs. Remove the swabs. The only time I've ever really put these on somebody's eyes if they have an arc burn from a welding torch where they actually cause a little bit of burn to the cornea itself. And every time you blink your eyes, you're actually scraping off new cells that are trying to grow and it hurts like a son of a gun. Yep. I think that's really funny and cool that the pupil looks like the symbol of Mr. Beast. <laughs> really funny okay we just needed to sign a couple of release forms to be in the video um, all pretty standard stuff oh <laughs> is everything okay i don't think the lenses of the eyes would cause that maybe emergence phenomenon out of anesthesia sometimes people who get anesthesia will have abnormal reactions have weird trippy dreams yes i'm i'm, I'm sorry i just this whole experience has been very emotional for me. Please sign here. <laughs> Sometimes you can actually have a type of delirium that occurs when you're actually in a hospital. We typically see it more with a very, very sick population as well as the elderly population. You typically will develop if you are an inpatient and you've been there a while, been under a lot of mental and physical stress. Sweetheart, are you okay? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sometimes we have auditory hallucinations, visual hallucinations. Historically, there's been some messed up people that have actually done things to people who have been under anesthesia. There's a huge spectrum. Oh no. Did he cut his own oh eyes my out? God. Oh my gosh. I've never seen somebody actually attempt to take out their own eyes, except for in like TVs and movies, but in real life, no. Holy painful. Oh my gosh. Very extreme. I don't want to see. I don't want to see. I don't want to see. I don't want to subscribe. Please don't make me. Why would his head be wrapped for a cataract removal or putting a new lens in? That's near, pretty much your anterior chamber of the eye. You wouldn't need to go into the back of the eye making incisions. So that doesn't make sense. Maybe more for dramatic purposes they would do that. Here, take take the picture for the thumbnail. Please don't get me. <laughs> so bad stuff. This poor kid who's in so much distress, not necessarily from the eyes themselves, but probably from the surgery and effects thereafter of being in the hospital. Uh, I don't want this. Oh no, it looks kind of weird, I don't man. I, I, don't I don't know. Want, I don't hey, it's fine. Stop. We'll just upscale it with AI stop. or something. We'll be fine. Let's go. <laughs> if you lost your eyes by cutting them out or getting massively destroyed, can you replace the eye with a, like a new eye that would actually function? No, we don't have the ability right now. I'm limited by the technology of my time. Take these shoes, Morty. They're sp <coughs> special grappling shoes. Why does Rick have like weird saliva, sputum, phlegm coming out of his mouth? We get this all the time where people will say, oh, my sputum is green, so that must mean I have a bacterial infection. Not necessarily, it could. It just has to do with breakdown of cells. Sometimes you can have a viral illness that produces green sputum. It just has to do also with the other symptoms that you have in your clinical picture. When you're wearing these things, babe, these babies, you can basically just walk on any surface you want, Morty, up, down, below, Sweet. turn around to the left. These things really bring it all together. <laughs> you have to turn them on, Morty. Morty, you really... You have, have to turn, turn them on, on first, though, man. You can see the number on your legs right now. Oh, hey, that's not good. If you fall from anywhere greater than three times your height, it's a major trauma. Typically, in the United States, you're going to go to a trauma center. You'll get evaluated. You'll get a primary and secondary survey by the trauma team to make sure you're okay. You will check A, B, C, D, E, and then and go on to looking at the rest of the body. You know, you gotta turn the shoes on, Marty, for them to work. I'm in a lot of pain, Rick. 
Oh. Nice! Weird sci-fi kind of injection with a vial on top. We don't have that stuff. We do have syringe vials where you actually can just screw them right into a device and push the medicine right in. What med did he just give him? My broken legs instantly. I mean, I've never felt so good. Awesome. In my life. I wish we had that. Literally, the injections we would give in this situation would be pain medications. We are getting into different types of injections that we can give into joints and into the body to help heal it faster. Uh oh, is he gonna grow? Don't worry about it, Morty. Just turn your shoes on, Morty. Right, buddy. Sure thing, Rick. Not that you asked, Morty, but what just happened there is I went into a future dimension with such advanced medicine that they had broken leg serum at every corner drugstore. The stuff was all over the place, Morty. Wow, that's pretty crazy, Rick. Isn't the future great? We got better science, better medicine. Obviously, it takes time to do these things. You need to do safety protocols, and then you do experiment over time, and then even later, you need longer time periods that make sure medications work. God damn it! Who the f*** do they think they are? I Remember love the school Cartman. School we all took okay. last week? Yeah. Well, the school put the sizes of all our penises up on a big chart in the school hallway. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I do remember school physicals. They're checking for like scoliosis. They have you like bend over and they're looking for like the hump, potentially getting like hernia checked. If I'm looking for a hernia, I'm not feeling the testicles per se. I'm actually feeling above where the spermatic cord comes out higher up where the pubic area is. When you cough, you increase intra-abdominal pressure and you push the intestines further down. If there's a defect in the wall, that then needs to be repaired. Why would they tell everybody that? They want to measure my wiener? Fine, but don't put me on blast. I told you the students would be interested in how much they grew since their last physical. Oh my gosh. So it's the growth of their height and not the size of their genitalia. I do remember that they always um, check their heights, but I even remember my own house. We went against like the doorpost and my mom would put a mark with a ruler and measure us over the years. Did any of you do that or still do that in the house? Let me know. Hey, wait, the cold is making it shrink some. Where you going, little fella? <laughs> It definitely does. It has to do with blood flow. And when it's cold, the blood flow basically goes to our core of the, the body and gets you know shunted from the extremities, including your genitalia. And same with the scrotum. The scrotum shrinks up as well. If it's cold out, it brings the testes closer to the body to keep them warm. Hang on, he's coming back out. There he is. Who's a little guy? I love how he's oh, talking to his like we have two point, wow, 2.4 inches. Really nice, buddy. <laughs> I'm hung like a horse. <laughs> Very awkward when you're at the doctor's office and we have to do exams. We basically try to cover everything. Our main purpose is only to make sure that you're fine. Oh gosh. Putting your head inside somebody else's mouth is probably not the best idea. Dental injuries, bite wounds, something that I do see in the emergency department. We see people come in with human bites, so somebody else biting you. Sometimes it breaks the skin, you worry about the different bacteria that can actually get embedded in. With puncture wounds, you worry about the bacteria getting seeded down, so if you actually suture it closed, you're actually sewing in the bacteria. Oh no, the eyeball. I remember seeing the eyeball scene in the first one. What? This is actually correct. There's a specific type of lid retractor for your eyelids to keep them open. It's really hard to keep your eye from moving. A lot of times when somebody's having eye surgery, you'll have an anxiolytic like Ativan or Xanax or Valium to basically calm you down and try not to move the eye. Oh! Come on! Come on! So you have the bone on the back side of the eye itself. That's where your blood vessels and your muscles and your optic nerve, everything kind of rolls through in that area. It is darker blood, which is most likely venous blood. So we look at our arms and we see like the blue veins, right? It's not blue. The darker blood is more deoxygenated blood. <laughs> ketchup on your french fries or is it ketchup plus mayo or is it just mayo let me know in the comments oh no 
PTSD coming back at you. There's a lot of triggers for PTSD and it gets into a big long conversation about the appropriate treatment for it, but there are different medications that you can go on as well as different types of behavioral and cognitive therapies that you can actually do that would help. Oh! We see it in movies sometimes, an airway put in by a straw or a pen. You can put a tube into the trachea right there, especially if there's swelling and you can't get a tube down somebody's throat. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking your own blood or anybody's blood will make you nauseous. You can actually get elevated levels of iron in your blood. Too much iron in your blood. <laughs> we see people who come in and have a hole in their eardrums due to pressure, due to an infection. Blood could come out because of a small blood vessel there. Typically, you actually have a communication in the back of your throat with your middle ear. That's why we get fluid in our ears when we're sick. We continue to suck. It certainly does suck. Oh, jeez. And you can actually have some abnormalities of eye movements actually when you put different fluids in the ear. There's definitely a, a reflex, depending if you put cold or hot fluid in an ear, cold reflex is the most common. Oh! <gasps> what? I've worked at a restaurant before and those grills are hot. So it's like a fourth degree burn. It's so deep into the musculature below all the fat tissues and the nerves. If their airway's intact and most of the structure's still there, you could survive, especially obviously if the brain's still intact. Oh, just, and everything blew up. Their skin is charred, dark in color, smoke. Yes, that does happen. And the biggest thing we worry about, somebody actually has soot and black smoke in the nose, around the mouth. You always worry about upper airway swelling and edema. We're just gonna do Coke versus Coke and pray I don't die. Oh! Ooh. Wearing sunglasses, which aren't safety glasses, that could actually cause injuries. Glass bottles smacking into each other. I'm assuming they were also shaken so they're a little bit more pressurized, so to speak. I do not advise any of this because of the risk of injury. Gotta be careful. Yes. All right, note this up, boys. Don't smash the Coke bottle against the Coke bottle. Wow, very lucky. Laceration to the right side of the cheek. If it's super tiny, you may not need to sew it shut. You might be able to cause enough compression to get it to stop bleeding and it heals on its own. Versus do we use a type of medical glue. There's a brand called Dermabond that is very common. It's like a purple type glue that's sterile. I'm Preston Lacey here with pro kicker Josh Brown. And this is the field goal. Oh gosh, he's a pro kicker, so he knows what he's doing. Hopefully he's wearing a mouth guard. I would have worn a full face mask like a football helmet versus just some ski goggles. <gasps> Getting hit in the face like that with a ball, depending on if it's flat or the pointed end, this can cause serious whiplash injury, head snapping back. You can actually cause a really bad cervical fracture as well as an injury to the spinal cord itself, even if it's just bruising. Whoa, 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 what am I looking at already? Gunshot wound right to the heart, right to the thoracic cavity. We can actually do a thoracotomy where we crack open somebody's chest to get all the blood clots out of the way, find the problem, and then close it. Uh, okay, stay away. This actually looks like a table saw. We see a lot of saw injuries that come to the emergency department. Skill saw, table saw, freehand saws, lots of different types of saws out there. We see a lot of lacerations and amputations. Oh! When somebody gets a saw injury, a lot of times we'll end up getting an x-ray of somebody who has a laceration just to make sure it doesn't go into the bone because if it goes into the bone, you get concerned because there's an increased risk of getting osteomyelitis. A lot of times people will come in to the emergency department, the bandage is either soaked with blood or it's wrapped, we'll actually take it off. You gotta rip that bandaid off now, you'll thank me later. Remove the clot, clean it with a lot of water, high pressure type of water, and actually anesthetize the area. And that way, at least while somebody's waiting for the imaging or waiting for the doctor to get ready to sew it up, you can at least be anesthetized and not feel a pain anymore. Okay, turn on oh, the suction. Oh, don't do that. 
lot of suction injuries that happens it comes to the emergency department for many different reasons you always worry about the suctioning because it's actually drawing a lot of blood to the tissue which can is going to cause a lot of inflammation to that area which then can cause actually injury to the tissue now homer got his eye stuck in there and then he sucked out his eye it won't mm. suck all the way out because you have six muscles that attach there plus the optic nerve 